What's up guys? Today we're with Cruz and, and Timo 2A from IPR. What's up guys? What's up? Hello guys. So you guys had this very famous battle against Cards and Legends just a couple of days ago. And it was the highest uh, point uh, that people ever did in raid history in terms of CBC. You guys got 168 million and they got... Uh, let me double, let's pull out the picture. You, you guys did 168 million and they did 153 million. And what was the second highest? Like before this, I think the highest point was like 60 million and it was you 81. guys. How, how did this happen? Like why did you guys have so heavy competition against each other? Like how did it turn out this way? Uh, we've always been have a strong rivalry with uh, GNL, even if we never faced them in a CVC uh, between IPR and GNL. Uh, it's always been a fact that um, GNL was going for trophies in terms of CVC on the win streak. On we were the same. On we never had the opportunity to clash against each other. On this opportunity has finally come, <laughs> like everyone has saw, has seen it. And uh, yeah, it was the time to. Go with big numbers, uh, break the, the old record, which was a little bit outdated since um, it was done when they were not super red on everything. So it was now possible to do way more points. And it was just crazy and very interesting. And I guess both clans loved it. It was very intense, uh, pure just enjoyment of the game. No sleeping for sure for many people, but it was fun. <laughs> yeah, by the way, I'm surprised that you guys haven't had battle before i thought that somebody told it to me but i you know i don't really pay attention to this this stuff so much but somebody told to me that the reason why you guys had like two more trophies than they did is because you guys had a battle before and you won it but i'm surprised that you guys were isn't cvc like three years old how have you guys been able to not battle against each other in cvc when you are like the two highest rated clans there and has there been like you know a lot of uh deals negotiation like how has this happened or is it just pure coincidence it, it would definitely not be pure coincidence it was a fact that um, we knew that if we were fighting against fighting against each other we would go for crazy number and crazy score like that because both clans would not give up so for sure both clans did not want to have it as soon as possible because um the sooner we have this kind of fight uh, some people will want to take their uh, their part of the their piece of the cake and then want to, to snipe and do something like that, which could be like a little bit uh, hard for them because they could expect us to be out of resources, which is definitely not the case. But definitely, the clans wants to keep you know their big score capacity the longest as possible because it also works as uh, you know just try to then negotiate deal with that. Probably Jenner was doing that. We in IPR never had to fight uh, in the past because people knew that we could go with big numbers. But uh, this fight was very good opportunity to show to people that both clans are definitely able to put up some cr so, uh, such crazy numbers. And I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure that that kind of crazy numbers can be put up again by both of the clans. So that's just a good way to show again who we are because GNL is also a very OG clan. It's an older clan actually than IPR. Um, they are crazy, crazy, crazy good in CVC and crazy ready for sure to fight, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> in yeah, fact, uh, there's another another big clan with a big amount of trophies that we tried to snipe many times, but uh, we weren't able. That is Ruse. Ruse actually had uh, one more trophy than GNL. And uh, we tried to snipe them because they were the closest one to us. We tried many times, but we couldn't do it in our own clan on IPR. Wait, you're but talking... Fact, yeah, yeah, go We on. tried. So you're talking about rodents of unusual size, right? Yes, rose. Yeah. Dude, dude here's, here's a fun backstory. Like, I'm sure you guys didn't know about this, but before I joined... I'm a little bit salty about this, but this is years ago. Before I joined MAD, I was in a clan called this clan, rodents of unusual size. I was in this clan, and when CVC was announced, they asked me if I can go to different clan in the same cluster because I'm not gonna do enough points in CVC. So I actually am pretty familiar with this clan. I think um, I think there's actually one member still left 
uh, from the time that I was in there. I have actually looked at it a couple of times. Can I find him? Uh, wait, is he not here anymore? Yeah, th there was one guy from that time, but I don't think he's in there anymore. Maybe, N never mind. <laughs> I ra a random backstory, but I used to know the clan leader. I think it has changed a couple of times since I was in there. Yeah. That's a ra random topic. So speaking of sniping, you brought up sniping. So correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not expert on this. And by the way, just as context, in last TBC, my clan did 7 million points. So we are not super relevant here. I mean, uh, Timo alone did like many times, like five times more our points or whatever. But uh, so did TNL snipe you guys? Are you going to fight their second clan in the next TBC? Yeah. Probably. <laughs> this is going to be fun. So, okay, can, can you elaborate about that? Has there been like, you know, backroom negotiations? Have they like, have you guys tried to do deal? Has there been like trash talk? W what's going on? We will see in two weeks, <laughs> to be honest. Okay, okay so that's, that, sound, that sounds like this is not, you know, this is not obviously on friendly terms and they want to get the revenge, but where they do, like, I don't know, and maybe you guys don't know, but you, you know better than me, were they planning to do this from the start? Or did they do that at the end when they when it seemed like you guys were winning? I, think I don't think it was planned because they were fighting against Les As Yeah. In the Strong same plan. time. Which is a French clan who also go a little bit hard on CVC. So they had to go with a lot of points. So that's why they ended up at the, at the third position. And Les As got the fourth position because Vienna 2 won their fight against Les As. Yeah, I, yeah, I'll pull, pull up that picture. So, what, okay, t tell me about this train of thought. Obviously, I'm a little bit familiar with this kind of stuff myself, having been in MAD before, and sometimes people <laughs> people specifically switch clan members inside these clusters if you have a heavy CVC battle. So th does this mean that you guys are going to switch many members, like maybe somebody is fresh with resources that you're going to put in the clan? I think Guards and Legends might do that too, or what's going to happen? <laughs> One fact about us, we are made by whales. The IPR is a clan almost totally of the members. Not not the entirety, but almost all the members are whales. So 15 days is enough to get almost the same points again <laughs> for most of us. So if the, the goal is to, is to try to snipe us in a weak moment, it needs to be the day after the CVC has ended. Otherwise, if it, it's their time, we will put up as many points as we can. Uh, in 50 days, most of our resources will be bought back, you know? So, so, so you're, you're we saying are not weak <laughs> because of that. <laughs> so you're, you're saying that... It'll be 15 days and I will do 20 million again. <laughs> okay, so you guys don't have to and are not going to switch clan members to prepare for that. Nah. But, we don't do any switches. But I'm assuming that they are going to do it, right? No, I don't know. <laughs> okay, there has been no back and forth negotiations or trash talk. Like, if I was them, I would say something to you guys that, uh, like, you know, I don't know, pay us money because we have another clan with fresh members and you guys can't beat us. That there hasn't been anything like that. No, I don't think there is any reason of or any need for that kind of talk. For example, uh, before the fight, we did not have any talk with them. Mm. Just knew it was just obvious and genuine that they would fight and we would fight, and they knew it. Um, yeah, it's just pure competition. We, we are not here to be to be arrogant. If they want a rematch, we will give them a rematch. Is if if they don't want one, we will follow it as well. What happened, Chini? It's the first day, the point we did in the first days. It was only using resources that we can buy again with fifteen days. So outside. The two last hours of the CVC, we can do the same points. So, and um, many of our members, the biggest whales, did not spend all the resources, not even close to that, because we saw that they stopped. So we reached uh, a certain uh, gap and we stopped pushing because we were waiting. If they yeah. push it, we will push. If they stop it, we will keep the gap, you know. So we didn't spend a lot of the resources that we had to spend if they, we need to push more. So in 50 days, we could do closest to the close to the 
points we did this time. At least most of the members. Yeah, definitely. The strategy at the end was to have like plus or minus plus 10% of their total score. Just so that if they start to push, 15 million is is too big to do in three minutes. So they will need to push a little bit ahead. We will see it coming and we will just counter push. There is no reason to just like use all our resources if it's already like um, win on the they just give up because they, they, they can't push enough. Yeah, and I know Cruz made a video and talked about it a lot more. Like, where did you actually get the points and the distribution and so on? But can you elaborate a little bit about that? But basically, you guys were farming some dungeon, basically the entire CVC in row. How much points did you get from other stuff? And do you guys need to like do any kind of planning or preparing for the CVC? Or it's mostly just going to be you farm dungeons two, two days straight and i know like talking with you guys you basically didn't sleep sleep for two days and you were super sleep deprived after it so i guess you had to do a lot of manual stuff too and you were not only running the aerosol helper the problem is not everybody has the time to be on at the computer every time to check if their account is running the, the dungeons without giving giving a, a error message or stopping or something went wrong energy so we we changed it a lot so timot at the middle of the cvc i had a, a, a energy power problem and the timot logged in my account and he farmed for me because i didn't have the the, the power in my house to farm so some that happened many times during the cvc people using other members account because they hadn't the time or an error has occurred in their computer and they were at work and things like that so we had uh, not many much time to sleep some of us yeah. because we we're doing this kind of thing timot there was a time i think timot was running like eight accounts on his on yeah, his I house a, i was almost running like 10 accounts for the entire cvc <laughs> yeah, just I doing like every helper on other computers on the side making sure that it's still farming because the guys will not be available, they could be sleeping, they could be working. Uh, actually, during the 48 hours time of CVC, I slept only 60 minutes. Wow. Uh, and then I, <laughs> I was woken up by the guys who phoned me and called me mm. because I was not on sorry, and they started to panic. But <laughs> I, I think Cruzan can explain to you his preparation, and then I can explain mine because it's completely different since I took to pull up that amount of, of points uh people been keep saying that yeah just spend a ton of money on you're gonna do crazy pounds on it's not uh fully true you can sp spend a lot of money but you need to be prepared you need to have your account prepared you need to have a lot of time and you need to be really well organized to be able to put up a lot of points i mean over 10 millions and gnl players actually know it very well and they were able to also do crazy score um most of people just think that now CVC is about just farming the same dungeons for 48 hours, which could be true. We can do like 10 million points minimum by farming the same dungeon for 48 hours. But if you want to do more points, you need to be way more uh, active, way more prepared and uh, organized to, to be able to do that kind of points. Yeah I, yeah, I think you did a lot of points from artifact enhancement, right? And by the way, speaking of that, do you also... I think... Uh, yeah, Cruiser knows more about your point distribution. I don't think you guys were farming spider that much, but do you like? I guess you're not selling any items during the CVC, but you are crafting a lot of stuff, right? Uh, basically, to farm spider right now, if you have to farm for 48 hours, if you have the energy and the will to farm, or you need to farm 48 hours, it's very hard to farm spider because you have to do gear cleansings for some times or many times depending on how many space do you got on your account so to farm sun devil and farm shogun you're gonna farm it the same amount of points it may be faster because shogun and sun devil teams nowadays are a lot faster than spider you can do it some... in like one second or how, how fast is it for you real one life second. time will yeah. be four seconds but in real game life. time which will show one second Sure. Yeah, but the real time it will, it will be four to five seconds because load screen and things like that, it will be around four seconds. So it's a lot. Uh, you can farm five runs, six runs in the time you farm 
one run on Spider with the same thing, and you don't have to do a gear clean source top to, to make space for the items farming Shogun or Sun Devil. And for big whales, you're gonna use everything that you farm there. It's not a waste of resources. You're gonna use all the dust, you're gonna use all the oil, you're gonna use everything you farm there. So it's not a waste of resources. You're doing that because you need to do that too. You're just doing that in the right moment, let me say like this, in the right moment. So that's why we didn't farm as much spider as we used to farm back in the past. Because Sun Devil and Shogun are faster and easier. And if you have to do it for 48 hours, it's a lot better. A lot better. But we did need to farm some spider or, or to craft something in the forge. Because we need, uh, needed some items so we could upgrade to spend our silver. Most of our whales have big amount of silvers, like huge amount of silver and that's a very fast way to do a lot of points but very expensive for example on my account it's impossible to do that as a low spender uh it's impossible for me because i'd never get a lot of silver i'm always <laughs> missing silver on my account but on accounts like timo that has 10 billion silver that's it's easy for him to do so the whales that had enough silver they some somehow during the cvc had to forge a little bit of items so they can spend a lot of silver and they didn't need to do that all the time to be cleansing all the time just to forge some put them to 16 uh use oil then to ascend to to the six star sell them if they're not good by and, the way uh, you, yeah yeah sorry you're gonna sell almost everything because if you're a huge whale almost none of the items will fit your account anymore so you're gonna sell 99 percent of what you forge or what you farm and uh, that won't uh, leave you without space you can do repeat the process many many times if you want without you have to keep in all the items for a low if you have a new account to do it to do it you're gonna keep many of the items that you put plus 16 that you are fully ascended or, or you don't even have the the, re the resources to ascend everything put everything to 16 but big whales can do it and they we for this cvc we had to do it and uh i guess uh at this level i guess charges isn't really like a big part of your points i assume Okay. Especially on big account, charge is too long. You need mm. to make some spaces. You just waste of time. Soulstone is way more efficient. Ah, okay. Because I think a lot of the players, like when I was watching Reddit and people were asking me about it, I think the expectation for most players is that you guys pulled like ungodly amount of shards outside of event during the CVC or like outside of like 2x events or whatever. But in practice, that's not really practical anymore. I think you guys, it used to be more meta in CVC, but less now. By the way, just for those people that don't know, so Timo has like two accounts, and you said that you played on like 10 accounts during the CVC or whatever, but you did 27 million points personally on your own accounts, right? Yes, that's right. So as context, uh, I think 27 million is usually enough often to be the clan with highest points during CVC, right? He was the 50 on the leaderboard, if yeah. alone. <laughs> But I think you can you can win you can be the rank one in leaderboard with twenty seven right outside of like PR rewards yeah, and my clan as a whole thirty members obviously we are not that competitive in CVC we did seven million points so Timo did like many many times more than my entire clan together which is crazy super crazy but you guys are putting a lot of like time and effort into this and obviously money and you are not sleeping and so on. Uh, what motivates you to do this? I don't know if you guys were following Reddit and I saw multiple people asking about this in official Discord and my Discord but like what, what is the like what motivates you guys to do this because obviously it's not the reaction rewards you guys probably oh. have plenty of reaction stone skin <laughs> is generally better than reaction anyway so it's for some other reason right? Uh, we was we were definitely doing that for reaction accessory. Come on, we needed those two these two yeah. accessories. <laughs> I, <laughs> actually, it was because um, currently IPR is undefeated in CVC since the clan has been created. Uh, so we are currently on uh, more than two years on a half win streak so far. 
and we aim to keep it. And we also really enjoy uh, fighting in CVC. If you gather the feedbacks of most of the uh, members who were involved in the CVC from both uh, Sci, GNL, and IPR, they all said that it was an amazing experience. Um, we very la lack that kind of content in Wretched Legends where clans need to be competing together. Like it's really about um, group on the um, teamwork so it's really a very great experience in Richard Legends when everyone has to team up together and everyone has to give everything we are all on discord for uh, hours just discussing uh, trying to manage optimize or scoring following as well uh, how much uh, our opponents are scoring we had some players doing excel constantly and to try to see within each 30 minutes uh, where did they would score us where did we would score them so it was a lot of organization and preparation. Um, it's really fun to do, to be honest. Yeah, by the way, he has the a fun. Real, Shini, the real, mm -hmm. the real reason it's Timot called me before the CVC and he said, will you send me a naked picture of yours mm -hmm. if I do the world record? Ah, and I okay. said, yes. And that's why he did the 20 million points almost. Okay, well, they money. earned that picture. Th that, they that, earned it. <laughs> okay, that, that that makes sense. Now, now it all makes sense. By the way, here's funny thing for those people you probably don't know about this. I already told you guys before about this, but this literally happened. I can't show the pixel though because it's against the rules. But there was like uh, one hour or thirty minutes left of the CBC or something like that, and Plarium was pushing out an update, and everybody got the message that the game is gonna go down. And uh, I don't remember who, but somebody literally asked in the content creator chat from the community managers. I think Banana Jam responded to it. No, I think it was Cyrilla. It, it was Cyrilla. But somebody asked Cyrilla to please stop the update so that you, your guys' war doesn't get interrupted. And she said, okay, we will do that. And I don't know if it literally, it literally happened, but that's what they said. Like th They gave us that impression that they literally stopped the update and prolonged it like 30 minutes or whatever for you guys. <laughs> well, why, what do you think about that? It was postponed. It's actually like just Plarium being Plarium, they just managed to, to put an update in the last 30 minutes of a CVC, especially <laughs> when that kind of find doesn't, ha doesn't uh, happen very often. Um, we know that, especially for that fight, when the gap of point was always mi minimum less than 2 million. So everything could change within uh, a minute. So the last hours was the most important. And just mm -hmm. Plarium releasing a maintenance was just like... A, so much <laughs> so much of a joke but by the we way went crazy. You, we went crazy when that message <laughs> but, but by the way you, you, you said that it doesn't happen often but i think it used to be something that they did regularly and there was so much complaints about it that they stopped doing it but i remember when cvc was new they used to often do updates like it was their ammo that they were always doing an update during cvc and people used to complain about it a lot and i guess they stopped doing it i kind of forgot about that Oh, yeah, about uh, what, what I mean by it doesn't happen often, I mean a big fight in CVC. Ah, okay, okay, my bad, I misunderstood. But yeah, it, you know, uh, I guess they don't follow everything happening in the game, but it was kind of, you know, worst possible moment to do that. And you guys probably know about this, I'm sure you know because you're into Platinum Arena, but many, many times, and I know it affects you guys because even if your clan, clan is originally uh, French, but you have opened up it to like global like player base uh it's big issue for people from us for instance like i guess cruiser uh that you know platinum arena reset is in bad time for people that are in america and people many many times have asked them to rotate the times or change it to weekend or do something about it and plarium has been giving this exact same response for many many years and it is that it needs to be at this time because they have workers online and they can monitor it and be like doing it and I guess I don't know if that's true like I almost feel like it's not true but that's what they keep giving us every time but yeah I, I guess they were not monitoring the CVC which I guess <laughs> would, would have been kind of relevant for them too by the way you, you guys remember when there used to be this thing in Platinum Arena I think it stopped happening but at one time it happened like many times in short time span that after the reset Nobody got the trophy. Do you, do you guys remember this? Yeah, even two trophies. It happened twice. Yeah, and we had to make tickets about it every time. You, yep. Yeah. Yeah, there, in the, there, there happened to be two trophies and they kept the trophies, if I'm not mistaken. 
Yep. Uh, what, what happened? We, what? we had two players of IPR who won each of them a trophy on the same reset. Oh, that's weird. You know, okay, these personalities, you know, cringe. But you know, one of those times I knew I didn't win, but I was the rank three. One of those times that it happened, I think you guys won during that time, and I was hoping in the back of my mind that maybe, maybe it's a mistake and maybe I actually won. But I, I knew it was, it was not gonna come, come to me when they fix it later. But basically. In those times when nobody gets trophy, people had to make a ticket about it, and then Barium gives it like a day later or a couple of days later or something like that. Yeah, I saw it happen twice, if I'm not mistaken, and since I was in MAD. I, I feel like it ago. happened more than twice, but it's a long time to, ago. To go to get once as well. Yeah, but so, so that's why that's one of the reasons why I feel like Barium's uh, argument or excuse that they. They can't change the time because they monitor the reset. That's why I don't think it's true, because all of those times the CMs didn't know about it when it happened and we messaged them and people had to make tickets about it. Like it's not like Barium fixed it themselves. They probably wouldn't have if we didn't make tickets about it. Yeah, maybe they're monitoring the something about uh, movementations and things like that, but not the result itself. You know, I don't know what they are monitoring, if they really are. But <laughs> It's very hard to to see this kind of behavior, you know, for a company to to know what's happening in the game. It's, sometimes it does not happen, but it would be very uh, healthy for the game if they are making this kind of of thing to to know what's happened really in their game. You know, they they were having the biggest clash of one of their game modes happening and they put an upgrade in the middle of it <laughs> it really ch we changed our strategy because of the announcement we we changed the way we 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 are going to behave because of it uh gods and legend must be really prejudiced by that uh, announcement because if they had people farming non-stop and the tvc was going to be uh decided by that if there was no push points, uh, the message of the upgrade itself would stop the farming and mm. things like that. And the message appeared three times, three to four times during the end, the last hour. Yeah. By so the way, it, even the, that makes a difference. Mm. C can you, by the way, elaborate on that? that I think you guys were kind of neck and neck to most part, and there was only like not not a very large, like two million. Uh, point difference or something like that, but in the end, I guess Guards and Legends gave up. Was it before the update or after it, or can you explain or do you know about it? Uh, when the updated showed up, we we thought, okay, so we are very close to each other. We I think at the moment we had a three million point ahead. I uh, need to check that, but probably we were three million points ahead. What's nothing? nothing hmm. one one person in 50 minutes can do that with push points so we were like okay if they are going to stop the server let's try to at least put a bigger gap so when the maintenance is, maintenance is over or if it doesn't happen or anything else happens we have at least a good gap to try to to come back if it if it's needed. So we started to use some push points. Uh, not all the players, but the, the ones that we wanted to. Timot coordinated. So he, 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 someone use your push points right now. Use that amount of, of points. Use that, do that amount of points. You, 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 you. And the people done uh, like uh, 15 millions in uh, 20 minutes, 10 minutes. I don't know how, how much time it took. And uh, let's monitor it how Gods and Legends and the game will respond to that. So, Gods and Legends didn't push. Or we push like 15 or to 16 and they push like 2 to 3. So, okay. The gap is 15 million now. If they put uh, 1 million in up, we're gonna push another million. And things like that. So, we started to monitor it. Because if the, the, the maintenance happened and many of our players wouldn't be able to relog or for some reason we had that at least a bit of safety to to try out or at least time to try to come back if it was needed 
but the message really rushed us to do that uh, before the time we thought we are going to do that. You know, we don't know if that impacted the gods and legends the same way it impacted us, because changed our strategy or at least rushed it. It happened at the two hours before the reset, instead of uh, an hour or thirty minutes before the reset, something like that. Yeah, speaking of the sniping at the end, I'm, I know it definitely hasn't happened to you guys, but somebody that, you know, was in MAD, it even happened to MAD a couple of times, that there's a Russian clan, and maybe we have like 5 million point lead and think we're good, and in like, you know, last 10 minutes, suddenly they go like 10 million points or something like, you know, it's not actually that impossible to do at all. If there's 30 players using books at the same time, you can easily make that amount of points like in a couple of minutes. It actually it actually happened to Gods and Legends. Oh, oh, yeah. I didn't oops. know about it. <laughs> yeah, the Oops clan. They were with uh, what, what, some gap. What not rank? One. What rank are they? If I try to look it up, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the the name of the clan, but uh, only oh. the 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 small letters are Oops. I don't know. I think oops. it's a Russian clan. Was, if I'm it, not dude, it, it's a Russian thing. Exp like maybe you know about it. It's a Russian thing. Ru Russian clans are always sniping. W what's up with that? That happened multiple times to Mad. I don't recall how many times. Like I'm sure it's maybe like two or three times. I can't recall exactly. Yeah. But uh, do you know our history with? Do you know how Rose lost his only trophy? The the only one that they lost until now. No. Uh, <laughs> let me tell a, a little tale about CVC. Back in the time, I told you that we tried to snipe Rose many, many, many times, and we weren't able. And they had the same amount of trophy as us. Uh, so that it that that was the only clan that we are trying to snipe many, many, many times. But they they was a, they were evading us, and it's a lot easier to evade a fight if you want to, if you are willing to avoid it. It's easy to avoid. So. As usual, we were ranking one in a non PR CVC, and they were like random number, like 17, 18, I don't know which number. And they got paired with a, a French clan that's friend of ours, the OBS clan, Obezamendi. And uh, when that happened, Obezamendi came to us and said, Let's go fight Rose. And we are, oh my god, we waited for that so much time. So what are we going to do? How is going to be the strategy? Are we going to swap all the 30 players from IPR to, to OBS? Are we going to swap half of the players? What are you going to do? So we had to figure out that. And the, the, our decision it was to not let Rose know that we swapped some members. So we put up an every plan to do that. We pick up five members of us that could do a lot of points, that had people on OBS with the same amount of player power. We changed the nicknames between the, the, the members. So OBS members put their nicknames as the IPR clan members, and we swapped these players from clans. So the player power didn't change it. The name of the, the members didn't change it, only the players itself changed. So OBS went to the clash with Rose and they behaved, Rose tried to do a deal with them, they declined the deal and they said, we are not going to let you win easy, we're gonna fight. But at this moment, there were five five to six i don't remember exactly how many accounts from ipr on obs clan and all the obs members that stayed on the clan were prepared for this fight like hell you know so rose thought it's gonna be more one easy cvc that they put up a, a four million gap and go to sleep so when they went to sleep all the 30 members were, were on the discord all the 30 members had all their sniping power ready to do it and we did like 22 millions in the last 15 minutes <laughs> and that's how rose lost the only fight they they <laughs> they lost in the entire cvc history that's how they lost 
the only trophy that he, they lost until now. That's how they don't have the many as the same number of trophies that us. Dude, because it, OBS did that with us. Yeah, if I knew about that, I could have. Uh, I'm sure one of them would have uh, been interested to join the video because you know I'm in the same cluster as them and I'm obviously friendly with them. Even though I told the funny story that I used to be in the clan, but of, I'm obviously very friendly with them, so probably could have got one of those to talk about it and share the yeah. experiences. But by the and way, yeah, go on. Since that day, since that day, at the end of the the reset, we used to have like three to four members online to try to counter push. Very big members that could do millions of points, like Timot and the others. But since we did that with Rose, we have like 10 to 15 members wake up in the end of the CVC because we waited for the revenge one day. Someday it will try, it will try to happen. So since that day, half of the clan is prepared to, to be awake in the end of the CVC and do push points. So we have countermeasures to be sniped. We really care about the CVC, as you saw. Mm. So we have countermeasures to that. Since that day, the countermeasures were a little higher than it was before. Because revenge could be anywhere. <laughs> we never know. Actually, the, the Rose strategy that we put up is not the one I'm very proud about, but it was the we use at our advantage the strategy that Ruse was putting. In, or, in order to evade us, there was, they were only staying at the bottom ranking of uh, CVC and they were always having just a little gap with their opponents. They were trying to just score as little as possible but skip winning, but don't go too hard so we could not snipe them because they would not be in the top, the top one, top five rank. So we knew that they would just like start, try to stick to OBS points, try not just to have a lead of 3-4 million. So we took that at our advantage. It wasn't the best on the fairest strategy, but it was the only way for us to match a clan who was always trying just to have some... It's not fake trophy, but just like they, they had trophies without fighting. They never had to fight. They always avoided fighting. Um, it was the only way for us to fight and have a, have a fight with them and just take that trophy from them. Yeah. And to be fair, that was one of the funniest CVC <laughs> that I had. One of the funniest. Mm. Actually, my account is one of the, the accounts that changed. Uh, Timot had, had changed one of his accounts too. So it was a very, very funny CVC. <laughs> crazy, crazy. Yeah, this is a long time ago, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like some of you guys, I, I don't remember which clan it was against, but I feel like that happened once with Mad too. That's I think some of you guys maybe joined uh, SP to, in a CVC against us. Do you remember that? No, it uh, was... I ET, think on it is, was... ET on SP joined IPR yeah. when we fought against Mad for the first time. Oh, okay, what okay. Mad was actually using similar strategy than... Um, than Roos in CVC on um, when we were ready on we were able actually to snipe them and we sniped them. Uh, Mad just declined the fight and they accepted to lose their first trophy because for a long time Mad was a uh, person mm -hmm. in terms of uh, trophy amount. Yeah, yeah, that's so that's so long time ago. I very vaguely remember it, but uh, you know I'm not the biggest CVC guy. I always was not into it, and you know Mad didn't. I mean Mad has two clans, of course but they literally didn't have CVC requirements back in the day and that was super attractive and you know the reason why I joined Mad is that they didn't have any CVC requirements there was like no other uh, arena class doing it at the time and you know probably for a good reason but yeah that, that was fun by the way you mentioned the name swapping and uh, sniping and that also reminds me of another funny thing that you guys used to do which i think you guys stopped doing it and i don't know why like in the peak days a couple years ago in summer when you guys were doing uh you guys were the best arena clan for like uh maybe like uh four or six months something like that you you were beating mad for a good time it was when heprak was new and i think it ended somewhere around when kubidus buff happened something Along those lines, it's a couple no, it, years. It ended when they, they released actually Marsh Counteras. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it's it's a while ago. I don't recall the details. Part of wait, Taras and Manis were on like on December. I feel like it ended a little bit before that. But okay, we can we can debate about that. But my point was that weren't they on December, right? Mm, yeah, okay. actually, you, you yeah, were I, dominating from I would hmm. say maybe 
July, August. Yeah. To September, October, we are completely dominating. Okay, okay, and then okay. October to December, we may be winning, I don't know, maybe 40% sure. of the resets. And then after uh, Taras Marshka, it was like way different. But yeah, yeah I'm, you mentioned the, the name swapping. We were just using a frog name. Mm. And that was because actually, since we were like a lot to push over 30 players all the time, uh, to have all of them with the name of Frog, they could, it, could, it would be way harder for Matt to focus the player. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, they probably do that. We were doing that in IPR. We had one player monitoring the, the leaderboard constantly. And that player could always tell, okay, that guy is first, that guy is second. So we need to take them down right now. Mm -hmm. So if Matt is doing the same thing, if all the, the members are called Frog, or have the same name, it's way harder. They can definitely still do it for sure, but they would lose some priceless seconds to just like give the information to the players. And the players would also lose priceless seconds to just check. So they could lose in like, uh, we know reset is about like 20 minutes in the end. So it's just like every second is priceless. And if you lose like every time five, three to five seconds, just to check if you are attacking the correct player by check, clicking on his profi profile, checking the, the player power on everything. Just like gaining time on getting, taking some advantage of this. Yeah, it used to be a big deal. Mad were super annoyed about it, and were of course, of course, they had you know their countermeasures, and they were trying to you know. It, it's not like they can't tell which account is which account, but it did take a little bit effort when you put the exact same names and many accounts even not many, but some of the accounts even had the same amount of trophies, and you put the same avatars. And you made it really annoying for people. That that used to be, that used to be a thing that uh, were talked about a lot. Also, by the way, mm -hmm. now, now that I think about it, so your guys' golden age was also my personal golden age because during the time you guys were doing well, I got all of my personal like achievements. Like I got all of my top three placements, which I did three four times. That was all during the time you guys were doing well. Now that I think about it, and also. I don't have pictures with me right now. I should have thought about it. I can, I can, I think I, sh I shown these pictures to you before, but years ago. But there was that one reset, first time that I got top three. Th this was when you guys were uh, like undeniable rank ones. And I don't know if you guys remember, but you used to run like um, offense with like, I think, Ravantu, uh Warlord, and was it. Um, I think it was like a Rama to Warlord, Lady Kimi and uh, Ragas or something like that. Some variation of that team. But you guys were running Ragas offense, which was kind of new and had not been Ragas or Leorius, depends on which account. But you were running those two in offense with like Lockout and uh, Ramantu. And I had like a, my first time getting top three. I think it was week after the release of Bolster or something like that. I had a defense lock that was 16 wins and two losses. And I got top three, and it was like almost only attacks from you guys. It was like your guys' top accounts hitting me multiple times, and me having like very slow offense, but my defense totally like destroyed. And the reason was that I was running a Mitrola with super high resistance, and it was resisting your uh, lockout or Ramantu with accuracy buff, which you guys used to do. Do, do, do you remember this at all? This is a long time ago. Uh, yeah. Yes, probably. We remember having some struggle to, to take one of your defense down. Yeah, probably, but yeah, that wasn't it at that time, definitely. Yeah, it, it it was one of my you know personal peak moments in the game for sure when I had that crazy defense lock on one one reset, but obviously it didn't last long. But yeah, that was my favorite uh, time yeah. of the game yeah. as well. Maybe not the summer before it, where you guys were dominating with Heprock. I was still running walkout defense, and it didn't really work super well against the Heprock. I was kind of having issue with that, but when Heprock got, went out of the meta. I was doing much better against the Cupidus teams. So, okay, that, that's an interesting topic, by the way. So you, you guys were saying that after Taras and Varitska, it hasn't been as good as it used to be. What do you think about the fact that Taras and Varitska were the meta for like a year in the game? And practically for a year, top 20, like every single team in top 20 is Taras, Varitska, UDK and Sifi. How do you feel about that? And what would you say to Plarium CMs if they like could hear you talking about arena meta and so on? Nerf polymorph. <laughs> <laughs> Nerf polymorph. Or get all the champion immune to polymorph. <laughs> get get the, the, the vaccine to um, the solution to this virus of sheep. <laughs> Please. Yeah, right. Uh, to my 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 a 
opinion about that. When I had the most uh, fun out of Classic Arena Reset, it was when the meta was changing very fast. Cupidus buff, Baron buff, Bolster set, Stone Skin, Reaction, uh, Baron buff. Dude, I said the, the same team so many times. I totally agree. I, I mentioned this thing like thousand times in my videos. But uh, the meta was changing like every three months, four months. The meta was changing. So it's take it took a time for some accounts to adjust to this meta. So it was the, the time that the low spenders or not as much stacked accounts could uh, snipe something. To, to It was the time that you won. Your, yeah. your your red avatar uh part of this well it was when this happened nowadays the top accounts have everything and when something new comes out they have just to wait for the 10x the x 15 25 how many x it happens or mm. the prism to have that new team so there's no more time to adjust you you're gonna wait for the new thing if it's good you're gonna instantly get it to the best form you can build it and use it so the top accounts adjust to the new meta in a few weeks uh, and the, there is no that much space for not very st stacked accounts to rise unless they have the perfect meta that is being played at the moment there there is some accounts that that happen low spenders or free to play that were very very lucky they open at the 20 primal shards got four mythicals, the perfect mythicals, they opened one prism, they got the ox, and things like that. You know? They they are perfectly just I know some guys that have incredible luck and that happened. They they got Galatir, Siegfried, uh, Lazarus out of 20 Prism, and they are free to play. But uh, it's a very few amount of players that will have adjust to the new meta without spending a lot. Or being very, or being being very lucky. So right now, I think the meta has more options. We are living a moment that the meta has more options that we had back when there was there were only Taras and Mari. There was no other meta, just Tara and Mari, and whatever you put alone in their side. Uh, but right now we have a few options to the meta but they are very expensive options mythicals or faction unities so it's hard again to to a low spender or non spender to fit in the meta so the players that really compete at the top are only the the whales and uh, that makes it a little bit sad mm, i agree for me at least uh, I prefer to have the, the best competition. So when there when there is a few amount of players that can do that, and they are they all group it together, the group that has more players has more chance to control the the the, the environment. You know, not that's that's going to happen. Not that's going to happen every time. It's not happening. The last three weeks, it's not happening. But they have more chance of putting that to happen. You know, if you have, if only it's 100 players uh, have real chances to, to be top one on Classic Arena, and you have a group with 50 of them, you have half of the environment controlled by you. You know, if the other 50 do not group together, or if they are fighting each other, or in fighting each other and fighting the, the, the big group, it, they have lower amount of chances of getting number one. That's not an excuse. That's a behavior of the community. But I preferred when a single guy coming out of nowhere with a Cupidus and a, yeah. and a you, bolster set could win the fight. Do, do, do you remember there was that one reset? I think it was an BF guy or some Chinese guy. But I remember when one reset, like Valkyrie wasn't meta. It hadn't been meta forever. And then one random reset, some Chinese guy won with Valkyrie defense. Do you remember this? Yeah, yeah. You mentioned it uh, in another video we did. I think yeah. you, you mentioned that, that oh, oh, moment yeah. too. But by the way, I think I mentioned this to you, but I remember when, when you were speaking about the meta, I think uh, on the event though, we have a lot of diversity right now compared to the Taras meta. And we had that like a couple years ago, which we all think was the best time for PvP. I would say that the issue compared to now and then is that the difference between the best champions and like 
semi-viable champions is much greater right now. And back then, every time, like, when the meta changed a couple of weeks or a couple of months, people didn't instantly know what to do. And the difference between the best and other options were not big enough. So you could run multiple other options than just the best one. And it wasn't instantly clear what is the best thing. That's why you could get... Uh, you would be able to do a lot of weird things and do well. I remember you were running Joffred defense when it wasn't a popular champion and you were doing well with that. And, you know, I was doing my thing and many other people were doing their things. I remember there was a guy called Creamy in Mad who was running offense team with double candy and resistance cardial. And he was beating the top accounts and finishing top 20 every week for like a month or a couple of months in a row. And he was like a free to play. There was a, there were several people like that back in those days. I, I guess you included. I guess you were not like super big spender, I don't think. On my own account, not. <laughs> yeah, on my own account, I'm not a big spender. I'm not used to be. Now I'm a little bit more. Mm. But uh, not, 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 not anywhere close to the big ones that we have here <laughs> and by, by the way to, to be fair like you you mentioned that, like the issue that people pull together and you, i mean i guess you were talking about mad but right now the gap between mad or like there's less mad in top 20 than there was a while ago now they are maybe like 50 percent or something like that uh i think some of their players retired on the big accounts went to the other clans yeah yeah and the, the other big players are are preparing a lot for the reset you know there there are some thq some uh um, even on ipr that are very prepared for the reset and yeah. these players are are at least uh, let's not fight each other let's fight mad <laughs> and some of them agree with that yeah I that's wish why some of the spots on the top are not mad yeah i wish i could participate in this right now not that i have anything against mad but right now my defense just doesn't hold up and i do terribly even though i would want to you know compete but right now it's super hard but it would be super fun time to compete since it's a lot more uh even and open than it used to be yeah right now you you can't afford many many wrong choices back in the past you could afford to do a lot of wrong choices and still winning right now the winner is the one that uh, do farm constantly, do not get destroyed in the defense, and do not commit a lot of errors in offense. Two to three wrong attacks will will take you out of the top three. Mm. Back in the past, you could have like five wrong attacks during the reset time, and would still be top one. Yeah. Nowadays, my, you can do that. My account situation is very like actually kind of different and unique. It used to be back in those days that we were talking about, I used to have pretty slow offense battle. Like I was doing like one to two minute offense battles, maybe like one and a half minute offense battles on average in a meta where a lot of people were doing very fast battles, like 30 seconds or something like that. I was not doing fast battles, but my defense used to hold up. And you know, I used to switch it a lot depending on the meta, of course, but my defense used to be kind of strong. Right now, you know, my best champion that I have pulled is Necrot. <laughs> Necrot kind of sucks right now because of Narsus. And I can actually get very ba very fast offense battles with Armand's and Narsus offense. I can get like 30 second, 60 second battles very consistently. I usually get no losses. But if I get high rank, my defense will get totally gutted. I had this one reset, I think three weeks ago, where I think I did like, was it 20 or 25 minute push? And with eight minutes left, I was ranked 28 and then like after one, I, one second I'm ranked 28 and then after next battle I'm 90 points out of platinum and I got hit like 30 times in two minutes or something like that. Right now the the, the top teams the top teams if they don't have the the right setup they are farmed in six seconds six mm. seconds because of Eox. So yeah. If you uh, when Tiox were launched and the uh, Dab, the, the 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 girl that won the reset in the week that Tiox was launched, when we are testing because she was the the one that was close to me that got Tiox, no the accounts that I draw that I that did not got it and things like that. So we built her team and she was testing, and uh, when she was testing, we were like, okay, you can attack anybody. It doesn't matter. If you go, if you lose, even if you lose, you just take this player out of your list and attack all the others. 
it doesn't matter because you're gonna farm in six seconds. If you lose one fight and win the other nine, okay. See, you're gonna still have a lot of points. Six seconds, you can afford to lose. You, you, when she was farming in six seconds, she, she couldn't even she could even afford to lose three fights and uh, win seven because the other people were doing one fight or two in the time she was doing ten. Mm. You know, it sounded like a, <laughs> almost cheating because at the same time I did one fight on my account, we were the same Discord, she did ten because it was six seconds real time, not game time. It was game time too. I think it showed six seconds, but six seconds she was ready to to put another fight, and I was like, trying to kill her to turn Stone Skin Mari. That took me forty five seconds, fifty seconds, one minute, one minute two, and she did like ten fights in the same time. She lost two, win one eight, and I I won I won my fight. I win like nine points. She won thirty seven. So. When the meta is like this, <laughs> the next reset, I think it's going to be a little more adjusted because people are just into Teox, the Teox meta. Yeah. So what, what do you like? What would you like to see? Like this is both for both of you guys. What should Plarium actually do to make PVP more balanced or competitive? Is it too hard to balance because there's so many champions or like Timo was talking about before, I think before the video that he's not uh, as ac actively pushing Platinum right now because he doesn't like the meta as much as he used to. Like, what do you guys want to see? Uh, personally, I, I want to see more diversity, but the game, the mechanics we have right now is very hard to balance. Mm. Because if you put, uh, if you nerf Polymorph, some champions will be unstoppable. You won't have some... If you nerf Polymorph, the Teox meta right now is only powerful. The only thing that makes the Teox meta powerful is the Polymorph immunity. If you nerf Polymorph, that will be like 10 teams that can farm in 2 seconds, 4 seconds, 10 seconds. And uh, it will be a very, very different kind of reset, I think. Because if Polymorph doesn't work as good as it works right now, the options that the people will have to do it will be a little bit different. By the way, so wait, what's the exit team comp that you guys are then running with him? Just a minute. You mean the team we're running with Teox? Yeah, yeah, the Teox team. Yeah, like we, we, we're using Sulfurion. Yeah. Raman to on Lazarus. Lazarus is uh, not built usually as DPS, he's uh, with faster speed possible. And then Sulfurion comes in to, to, burn, to burn and remove the stone skin. With landing the debuff, he also, he also increased the turn matter of the Teox. Yeah, yeah. Teox is just completely OP. Finally. <laughs> yeah, I'm... a new legendary that can completely, like, burst all by himself. Which not with Mythical on the side. Yeah, and Lizardman, I mean, I guess Ramadu used to be very popular at one time. But I was, uh, at one time, I was looking at the different factions and what kind of faction leaders would we get and what factions I think have a potential to be super relevant in PvP. I was not expecting Lizardman faction lore to be a thing in PvP. That kind of came out of the bush. What I was expecting is that um, maybe Night Revenant would have a good chance if they got a good faction lore champion. Since they have like Crixia and the White Duo and maybe some other options with you know like uh, Hegemon or Gaius and Georgit. Maybe it could be a good faction, but the Lizardmen came kind of out of the bush. Uh, and I, I guess what you were saying before is that, like, because the, I think they, they, they did, did an event for it, uh, was it last week or two weeks ago? Basically, everybody in top plat has Deox. Yeah, most of the players went for it because he's just too amazing. Do you, do you have him? I guess, do you have him? Yeah, yes, I do. How, how heavily empowered do you have him? Uh, he's plus two. Okay, okay. And I guess you're gonna go for plus four if he's uh, in any kind of event in future. Or do if you he comes back in prism, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here, here's the funny thing. You know, I have never bought the prism shard, and I've already said this multiple times on uh, videos that I really, really want to get Harima. I have been wanting to get her long time, 
uh, when they do Prism uh, event for Harimo next time, I'm just gonna buy them and try to get it. <laughs> I'm finally gonna go for it. It's the best way to get a champion's prime prize shot. Nothing is anywhere close to it. Mm. By the way, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, I think it's... Uh, dude, we went for like 50 minutes. Do you guys have, have anything else you want to talk about? Uh, C no, one hour. Do you have anything else you want to talk about the CVC or other stuff? I kind of ran out of my questions. I was actually asking a couple of people in my clan if they were able to talk with you guys or Gianna, what would you ask? But a lot of those questions were like, you know, why are you big whales? And they were kind of, you know, a little bit basic ones. So we didn't go through all of them. But there was a couple, uh, couple um, questions from comments and Discord chatters, by the way. Just so you know, they, they, they uh, were not all drafted by me. The thing I want to say the most, it's when I, I launched my video and uh, when people were commenting these, when people were proking in the in the live asking, why? Why do you do that? It's mm. simple because we have fun with it. We're not doing anything illegal or something that uh, is bad to the society or anything like that. We're just having fun with the game we play. And uh, the way we play, we are very competitive in everything we do. So we try to do our best in the thing we like to do. So why? Uh, it's not worth uh, to get a sacred to do all these points. Yes, we could buy <laughs> a lot of sacreds with the amount of money people, some people spend. But uh, we prefer to do the fight. You know, it's good. It, it's funny to us to do, to have these moments, to have uh almost all of our players in the discord having fun that uh, it's something that almost never happened like having 25 to 30 players in the discord everybody at the same time people not sleeping to be there people not working to be there and things like that are also <laughs> so having fun with the moment is not something you 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 are obligated to do it's something you do because you want to do you wish to be there you want to be there you want to do that and uh, that has no nothing but benefits to your account to the game to the community nothing but benefits so it's for us it's a very good moment it's a enjoyable moment and that's why we do it it's not for the we are reward itself it's for the moment and the glory the honor <laughs> I, I guess it goes without saying then that you guys are probably super excited about the sieges yes definitely yeah, I, I guess uh, we don't know yet how like how well you can you know try to get matched against specific clans, and it might just be that maybe if you do really well, you get the top class. Chances are that you're gonna meet like Mad and Chianal and other clans like in future. What like uh, I guess uh, maybe you guys probably know better. What what class do you expect to be the like the hardest battles that you might get in sieges? And I guess uh, what the ones more focused on PvP are the ones that are harder to beat. If yes. every single player has PvP builds, well, how how do you guys think? Harder. Like, I guess it's gonna be like the hardest battle when you get like mad. I mean, mad. I, I guess mad you mob. you guys don't even know if you're gonna win against them, but you, you think you have a chance to win? Uh, depends on the, the strategy because when that battle happens right now at this moment, mm. when it's a very important thing because siege has some strategy related that it's the the strategy you're gonna use is not it, it will not be the same every battle because you got random things that change between every battle so every time this this siege uh refreshes you have you're gonna have to set up any strategies based on what your players capability of teams and the builds and what uh, kind of champions you have in each account, what fits better for the moment, how many defenses are you going to put, uh, uh, how many uh, points your stronghold have, how many mana shrines. We didn't have problems with destroyed buildings, but how many builds you will be able to re rebuild if necessary, things like that. So when that happens, will we'll be a very important thing to how we're going to handle it. You know, but... Whenever it comes, we have one of the most prepared uh, 
the, we we are one of the most prepared clans to do it. You know, we we were discussing that uh, uh, in the, that mon morning. We in our a specific channel to that. How we're gonna handle this siege? Even if it's not a hard one, if it is a hard one, and things like that. We are one of the clans that uh, try to do strategy, a strategy and set up a strategy for every single player, every single post, every single team. We have people assigned to go to a person and say, okay, show me your gear, show me your champions. We're going to build this way your champions, we're going to set up this way your defense, we're going to put it on this post and things like that. Yeah, we for were, every single player. We were doing that in my clan too, but not that extensively. For the first seats, we were just uh, looking at all of the best teams and putting them on Stronghold. But after that, I realized that it was a massive mistake and we shouldn't really put all the best teams on Stronghold. And we should think more about the conditional rooms and try to min-max those and maybe get some more defense wins in those. But now we'll know in the future. But I think the seats battles are going to be a different beast than a classic arena. And I think it's kind of up for grabs for multiple different like top level class because a lot of it is going to come from like, first of all, having a diverse pool of champions, of course, but coming up with strategies. I don't think it's going to be super clear that any specific clan is going to beat it. And I, even like, let's say that uh, you guys or Mad would be the best clan it, on average. I don't think it's that the same clan is going to win against the second best clan every time. I think it's probably going to like, you know, vary a lot who comes up with like stuff and so on like maybe you have some i don't know like uh knight revenant only team with very weird builds or speeds that catch catches people off guard i guess you have, you have the best one it will be something very hard to say in Sage because what is the best clan in Sage? if it is the ranking uh if you have a perfect defense on the first post you won't have uh as many as many defense points as someone that uh, had three to four posts destroyed and uh, many people are attacking many posts you know so uh, right now the top ranking clans had some posts destroyed and people had many offenses trying many posts if you only have the first three not defeated you only have defenses on these and if your best players wouldn't be able, why the lowest ones would try and people get demotivated by that. So you don't own a lot of points from defense and your rank won't go up. So it's going to be very hard to set up these because if, if you put your perfect defense in the first three posts and they are undefeated, you probably will have lower amount of points than the clan that had half of the posts destroyed and the, the clan was losing a lot of battles against a lot of, of different defenses and things like that. So it's going to be hard to, 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 to be, even to control the position in the rank, because there's a lot of, of, of things that you have to take in account to set up the ranking inside. And one of that is how you're going to handle the exactly posts. Maybe some, some people figure out how is the best way in a few sides you know we're gonna have a very bad defense on the first one or the second one so people could enter the 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 other passes and have uh, very good defenses on the three other so people get to attack a lot but lose a lot and things like that right now we are just adjusting ourselves to the game mode this is pretty new and we don't have fully understand of how things work. We're gonna try something on this siege, for example, that it's gonna be a try of how it works. You know, because we don't know uh, the 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 devs, the modes, the 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 plurium won't won't answer our, our questions about it. But we want to know because knowing how the thing works makes a difference on our, the strategy we're gonna use so we're gonna have to do tests and these tests won't only will happen every 15 days so it will take a lot of time to test everything we want to know how it works and to figure out the best way to do or the optimized way to do at the moment we are just trying to win the fight <laughs> 
But in the future, we're gonna maybe have a more chess-like view of the thing that you have to sacrifice one 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 post so people can have more defeats or more things like that. A more a, a greater view of the picture, something like this. At least that my that's my opinion. I don't know if Timot has the same opinion opinion, but or yeah, I agree with Chris. It's a very interesting content. It's going to be very hard to master it because it's going to be like one fight every two weeks. Uh, you often mention always mad on other top clans, but there are also some other top clans which are a bit newer than mad, a bit younger than mad, who could also be very dominating in this content, such as uh, Mob definitely or CHQ. They could definitely be uh, probably a harder challenge for us than mad actually, because the fact of mad is that they want to have two clan with the similar level, and I completely respect that. It's I have the same vision than them. If we also had to have two clans, but then they don't have one clan which all their 30 best players. Um, mm. For this content, that will definitely handicap them. So I'm very curious to see how they will manage to handle that. Maybe they will be able to dominate with, their, with both of their clans, and that would be amazing. But there is definitely out there other clans that are as scary as mad for us in terms of challenge. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I really want to, you know, talk too much about that kind of private conversations, but I can tell you that that wasn't always the plan. It almost went to completely different road in mad. Like they were considering completely different options that the second clan would be much more free to play friendly or that but i guess that didn't happen but yeah yeah like like i said i think the uh the new like am oblivion is super strong i guess they have been doing very well in classic arena too and like i said i'm also not expecting that i don't think it's that simple that even if one clan let's say that and i'm not saying that but let's say on paper mad has the strongest uh like accounts and players that doesn't mean that they win Siege, because I think Siege is a lot more complex and just having the best gear and best champions or most active players is not its not quite the same as Classic Arena. So I think it's up for grabs. I think it could be a surprise, like maybe NBF comes out of the bushes and beats both of you guys in row. I think it's going to be interesting. There are some Chinese clans that are very PvP focused yeah. and uh, they are very united as a clan that puts some very good strategies. There is more option and the clan needs to be very integrated, you know, because right now, if one player misses the right strategy, it makes a difference for the whole clan. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone is uh, away from the keyboard for 15 days and uh, we need that player to do something for us <laughs> and we are not able to reach it, it's going to make the difference for the clan and things like that. But so by I way, think the more, more integrated clan will make the difference. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, I just want to quickly say a little bit uh, shout out to my own clan that if somebody is looking for a clan that is super uh, siege focused but not CBC focused, Arena Ensures is the clan. We have many people that are super into sieges and that was always the plan that we are going to compete in this one and try to do our best. We are not focusing that much on CBC so we don't have a, uh, high requirements of CBC and we don't try to win unless we 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 have a good battle that we can win uh, We still try to get most out of stone skin and you guys might not know this, but we went with this strategy that um, We'll see about the specific details in future, but we recently switched to clan We, we have two different clans and we hoped another clan and we can get like uh, Easy matchups on Hydra for the next couple of months Sieges is kind of complicating this because we don't really want to drop into rankings on Siege, but we wanted to do it on Hydra. But our plan is also to go super hard on CBC and we're super into this. And like you said, it kind of feels like it, it's an opportunity for players. Maybe you don't have the best possible like total uh, account on paper, but maybe you can come up with good strategies and you can outperform your account. That has me kind of excited about this game mode. Even though I think the player base at large is not that hyped, out, hyped about sieges. And I think if they had a little bit better rewards, more people would be into it. Now it's just the people, like I guess you guys and me, that are into it just for the sake of competition and the challenge mostly. Because the yeah. rewards are not that big deal. Exactly. I agree. That's a good time to end the video. We had a super long 
discussion about sieges and a little bit about, uh, I mean, not sieges, about the, the clan versus Arena. clan, about the clan versus clan, and a little bit about sieges and Platinum Arena as well. So thanks a lot for Cruz and, and Timo 2A for joining the video. Anything else you want to say as the final words, or maybe to Plarium CMs if they happen to see it? Nef Polymov. Sorry guys, I'm just back. Uh, Timo was not even that. <laughs> Dude, okay, I, I, okay, so TLDR, I just gave my final speech. We're about to end the video. Anything you want to okay. say, anything you want to say for a Plarium, like maybe you want them to change something, or to the players, just as like ending the video and so on. Everything is good currently with the game, except ship. CVC is amazing. Big shout out again to GNL for putting out a big fight against us. It was just amazing. We could finally have so much fun and like could finally refill re that kind of fun that we had back in the time with big fight in CVC.